In the next 8 minutes, you'll get 13 plus years of animation knowledge boiled down to one thing. Help you finish your animation piece in the face of any possible chaotic scenario, be it your rig, your timeline, your show style, or even your director going rogue. Because let's face it, it happens. There's a difference between student animation and real production workflows. And nobody told me some very important nuances that I wasn't prepared for early on that almost ended up burning me out. Here's what I wish I knew. The Foundation Why animating too many controllers is a killer mistake. I know, it seems obvious, right? When I started animating professionally, I thought good animation meant touching everything. Scale the hands, tweak the fingers, squash the spine. But turns out, touching everything means fixing everything. At some point, a lead at uh, Real Effects saw a shot of mine and I finally got it. He said, You're a real artist, but you're drowning in your own rig. I had bent, scaled, and distorted everything trying to show depth in the shot. Like, real depth in the shot. He showed me a better way. He said, block your keys with the main controllers only. The hips, the chest, the head, the arms. Pose them well in camera. Let the structure of those controllers do the heavy lifting. It wasn't just a creative breakthrough, and I know this sounds really simple, but it was a survival tactic. Suddenly I could make changes fast, clean up faster, and get real visual power with half or even less the effort. Because touching fewer controllers means fixing and correcting quicker. Think of it as traveling light. The emergency plan. What to do when things go south in production. Let's be real. Sometimes you have to go deep into the rig. Maybe it's a mocap cleanup or a late change that's not on you. Or a super high quality stylized show that demands perfectly sculpted early poses. And that's when this second workflow that I'm about to show you saved my career. Phew. Here's how I bulldozed through it at a Netflix feature when weekly targets were brutal and it was common to fix lots of controllers with lots keys. Number one, use selection sets to grab full limbs. I use Animbot, it's industry standard, but you can also use A tools, that's free. This way you quickly select an entire body part without worrying if you forgot a hidden controller you keyed. Number two, use Animbot or A tools to blend to neighbor or blend to ease key friends. This is a huge time saver for breakdowns. You can make timing and spacing creative differences with mathematical precision. So instead of working with individual keys or controllers, you can just grab chunks of them and work very quickly. Number three, Graph Editor's Retime tool is your friend. It lets you shift or scale messy sections fast. All you need to do is select the moments in the timeline and you start sliding it to your timing's needs. Number four, add keys at all shared frames with share key times. After crazy timing adjustments, or if you can't remember if you keep controllers you need it, you'll now make sure all are keyed on the key frames marked in the timeline. No surprises. Now, honestly, this is not a beginner fix, but when you're in the trenches and need agility, this is a lifesaver. Wait a minute, I just left the recording spot and I completely forgot to show you guys examples of the workflows. Let me jump quickly into my workstation so that I'll show you. Let's take this animation of a guy flipping a tire. For something so body mechanics driven, I would only touch the controllers that are the main ones for posing and body mechanics. The reason being that there's so much stuff going on that if I start messing with these guys here, I'm gonna have to work through the entire timeline and what would perhaps look good in a pose like this might not necessarily be what looks good in a pose like this when the knee is extended. You want to make sure you at least block your entire animation with as few controllers as possible. The controllers for this specific case that I am using are this one for the main body motion, the chest obviously, and I'm using these controllers for the feet, I'm using the pole vector controllers for knees and elbows, the neck, and I'm using the head. Obviously the tire is going to have to be flipped. So that is just a little over a handful of controllers that'll get the job done. Taking the same animation 
See this foot here? It's sort of dragging a little bit in the air before dropping. If we want to smooth this out, one tool that we could use is the blend to ease tool that would favor this last planting pose. The way we do this quickly, I'm going to create a selection set first. Click on this icon here, and I'm going to call this leg left. Uh, add in a color. You could do this also for your other leg. So now what I'm going to do is grab these keys here where it's planted in the air and I'm going to make sure I go to the Animbot's blame to ease option then slide over to the right. You can see the leg slowly moving towards the finishing pose which is this one. Just have to pick somewhere in between that we feel comfortable with let's say here and now we'll see this leg is planting smoothly. Now let's take for example this section here where he's really starting to lift the tire and we receive a note or you later realize that you want to make that section slower whilst preserving the entire length of the shot's duration. You grab the entire character, pull in your graph editor, and let's say that I want section from frame 79 all the way to frame 121 to be slower. Go to the graph editor and we select this tool here, which is the read time tool. I'm on 121, I double click in here, I go to roughly 79, and I'm also gonna create one marker at the very beginning and another marker. And now, we'll grab and slide to the right to make this section dilate more and this one compress more. The result is much, much slower initial lift and a much faster push at the end. Obviously, the tire would also require tweaking, but we have made a complex timing adjustment using only one tool. Now, if you're like many animators, you might stress about having stuff keyed on one frame, but not the entire character keyed on that particular frame. One way to fix this is to just select all your keys in the timeline, and you select this icon right here to mark all keys on shared key times. Click it. Why is it going to take a second or forever? So now you can see all places in the timeline where there's one keyframe, all curves are now going to have a keyframe on them. Finally, a lot of times you want your show to be on twos or you want to make sure you have a predictable distance between your keys as opposed to clusters of compressed keys followed by moments of empty keys in the timeline. To fix this, it's very simple. You just select all your keys again, click on this one, you select big on twos, it takes a second to calculate. And uh, here we go. You can put it in step if you like your show to be on twos, or you can just keep it in spline. But now you know that your timeline is much more predictable and manageable. You can do this on threes and fours, depending on your needs and workflow style. So now back to the talking head. When we're doing student animation, we are in control of the idea, the style, and likely even working with a pretty light rig. Last minute make it or break it changes are not as common or critical. Your workflow doesn't need to be robust. But if you're expected high quality work that might quickly change, then you must rethink your strategy, especially if you're being paid for it. That's why I created ProShop Builder, because planning isn't about slowing down. It's how you avoid weeks of cleanup and the sadly common creative burnout. If you've ever felt buried in keys or late on feedback, this guide could save your shot and your sanity. Plan better, clean up faster, burn out less. I'm Tiago, and if you enjoyed this tutorial, go to animastery.net, download the free guide there, or check out ProShop Builder to get serious. Links in the description below.